Okay, so today on the bench, we have a President McKinley, and as you can probably tell by the, the title of the video, Clarifier Unlock Procedure. So, uh, thought we, because I say we, because I worked, did this with Mark, um, thought we had it figured out, because how to do the unlock procedure on this. Thought it was cracked, <laughs> I tried to do the alignment, yeah, it was unlocked, but you could not get sideband aligned. It just receive and transmit were still not locked together. Um, so let me just quickly go over the story. Um, I was talking to him yesterday, working on a 980 SSB for the same customer, installed one of his channel boards in the 980, so there's the old one out of that radio. That's why the display's missing, because you have to reuse that. Got done that radio, I was like, well, this is the next one on the, on the bench for that customer. And I'm going to unlock the clarifier, and we're just chatting. And so I'm looking at the schematic, and the more I looked at it, the less it made sense, and kept looking and making less sense. <laughs> and finally, I was like, dude, this clarifier circuit in this radio, it just makes no sense. So he's got one of these, and he's looking at the schematic, and he looked at it, and he's like, what the hell are they doing here? This doesn't make any sense. So now I'm like, well, at least I'm not the only one. <laughs> So, after some poking and prodding, and I actually removed the clarifier control out of this radio to do a pinout, actually on the, on the dual control itself, um, doing some voltage measurements in the radio, referencing to, you know, to the schematic, and we finally, I guess you could say, we had a clarifying moment. <laughs> I've been working on a clarifier, might as well do a play on words, so we had a clarifying moment. That clarifying moment was that it appears that President actually designed this to have the clarifier unlocked very easily. All you need, well, you actually need two things. A screwdriver to take the top cover off, and a pair of wire cutters. But unfortunately, it's not that easy. But initially, what, what I did was, so we, what we've, the problem is, we have, or what wasn't making sense, actually, was... Uh, the camera view here. Let's see. So here's the transmit frequency adjustment. There's a trimmer resistor in transmit. That's VT8 would supply eight volts to this circuit, and that supplies the voltage here. Here's your varactor diode and your crystal. And then in receive, you have VR8 here supplies voltage goes out over to this header socket here. These six six lines then go to the cl clarifier, and the voltage would come back on. Actually, it comes back in here, goes back out to the course control, comes back from the course control, and then feeds this circuit in receive. But what wasn't making any sense whatsoever was this circuit right here. That says VT8. That's transmit voltage. And Mark looked at it, and he's like, dude, there's a 1-ohm resistor there. And I'm like, what do you mean there's a 1-ohm resistor? He's like, you told me the number, and I looked at it on the screen. Yeah, sure enough, 1. <laughs> there is a 1-ohm resistor here. Well, that's for all intents and purposes, a dead short to ground. So in transmit, there's going to be 8 volts applied here. It goes through a pair of series resistors, but as soon as it gets to this point, the voltage is never going to make it past it because it's, you know, it's going to get shorted to ground. So why would you even add this circuit? You've intentionally added these parts, but you've also intentionally added a dead short. Then we had that clarifying moment. You've removed this resistor and this resistor that removes this circuit out of the, you know, out of play. So your internal frequency adjustment for transmit frequency is no longer activated, which you do in a normal clarifier modification. But it in receive, it gets voltage from this point, but it, like I say, it comes back through this diode to this common point, and then in transmit, voltage is applied here to this common point. Now, in when you do that, only the course control controls transmit and receive. The fine stays receive only adjustment. Okay. And it worked. I checked it, you know, hooked it up, frequency counter, keyed the microphone, turn a clarifier. Everything looked wonderful with the world. And where those parts are, because there's still more to do, but that's I we thought that was it. So actually here are the parts. And what makes it look like they specifically designed this to be done by anybody was they used through-hole components. Look at this board. Most of those parts in there, they're 0402 size. Teeny tiny, like the size of fly droppings. <laughs> the 
only other through-hole resistor on this entire circuit board is right there. So, why would you use through-hole resistors if you don't really need through-hole resistors? Why not use surface mount like you did everywhere else? The only reason that one's in there is because they need a really big one, you know, for heat dissipation. But yeah, this made no sense. Until, like I say, clarifying moment, they're making it easy so anybody can take the top cover off, you know, snip, snip, cut those two resistors out, and that they will need to be removed for this modification. So their location is, okay, with radio facing up, speaker on your left, right behind the speaker here, you'll see there's a crystal. Now you'll see there's two empty spots right here and here. Rectangular box with an empty hole and an empty hole. Another rectangular box here, empty hole, empty hole. That's those two resistors that I removed from those four solder connections. You can just, like I say, if you don't have desoldering equipment, you could just cut the leads off of those. But you know, I've got the proper equipment here, so I just completely desoldered them and removed them. And that will unlock your course, course, and course control for receive and transmit. The problem is, I went to then go do the alignment on the radio. I could not get receive and transmit frequency locked together. I mean, they were locked. They both shifted with the clarifier, but the receive and transmit frequency, I could not make adjustments in here to get them so they were on the same frequency. You'd have, you know, I could turn on a monitor radio, transmit with this radio, have it set so the transmit frequency was perfect, on the on the receiving radio and then I'd try to transmit with that radio and listen to it on this one this radio is off frequency you'd try and adjust it again you'd get it to where it sounded fine receiving on this radio but then when you transmitted this radio was off frequency in transmit there is no adjustment you can make in here to compensate for that you can twist and tweak trust me I tried <laughs> It just, it's not possible so back to the schematic again well it actually makes perfect sense they're using two separate supply rails, or voltage supply rails. They're using one here and one here. So this one is deactivated. When you key the microphone, voltage disappears here, and it appears. But the problem is it's coming from these switching transistors down here. So the voltage is coming out of these, and not knowing what all the other load is that these transistors are driving, there can be a difference in voltage, and there was. Um, at this point here, we were talking like point, I think it was around 0.4 volts difference between receive and transmit. Well, 0.4 volts to a Veractor diode is a huge amount, <laughs> and that's going to change, you know, change its capacitance, and it's just going to throw your frequency completely out of whack. So, more, more pondering and looking at the schematic. So what I've come up with, and it's done to this radio and it works perfectly. We need to, like you would normally in a normal clarifier modification, you need to remove this receive only voltage source. So there's an additional resistor to remove. And then we need to also disable this circuit. Because like I say, they're using two different ones. And neither of them will work because they're only on in one, you know, either in transmit or in receive. So you also need to remove this diode. The only problem is, is those two components are not through-hole components like this. They are tiny. They're 0402 size components. And honestly, if you don't work on surface mount radios, you could screw up your radio. If you could damage in circuit traces, you could brick your radio. You make a nice, nice paperweight, but uh, I'm going to show you what you do. So the parts that actually get removed... Now, the diode, at least for me, is not too bad. That's the diode. Little teeny tiny thing. You're thinking, oh my god, that's small. Uh-uh. The resistor that you have to remove... There's the resistor. Yeah, fly dropping. <laughs> that little tiny guy right there. Yeah. So, where those are located... Now, like I said, I'm trying to get that... Get off my hand, little guy. Okay. So, back in the same exact area, if you look down in here, here's that resistor that was removed. You'll see there's two little pads right here that don't have anything soldered to them. You can see there's, and it's marked diode. Same as this here. This one is marked as a diode. This is the one you want to remove. 
So closest to this little, I'll come back in focus. Focus, focus, focus. So this diode that's closest to this notch in the board, right here, behind this large surface mount resistor, you're going to remove that diode. And then right here, so if you come basically straight back from that diode, you'll find that little tiny, and it looks, it'll look just like that. That's an 0402 resistor. But you're going to remove this resistor right here. So here's the resistor you, the, the through hole component you removed. You're going to remove the die or the resistor that's right behind it and the diode that's in front of it. So that disables the transmit and the, the receive switched voltages. Now there's no voltage being supplied to the clarifier at all. So we need an 8 volt source. And this is where it's basically just like any other um, clarifier modification. Once you've disabled the circuit, you now need to apply a constant voltage source to the clarifier. So on the bottom of the radio here, you have the, this connect, this header connector where it comes out. That is actually this connector right there, the big one down here. And that's the one that comes up, all six wires come up off of that and go to the clarifier, the little clarifier circuit board that has the clarifier control mounted to it. On the bottom side of the board, you're going to, counting from, nah, there actually it's pin number four, because this one actually it's the yellow wire at the top that goes up to the clarifier. This is pin one. So now with the radio upside down, speaker on the right, at this connector, you're going to count over one, two, three, four. Solder a wire to that. And we're going to come over here to the far, with the radio again, still upside down. So right behind the microphone jack. You're going to come over to the center pin of this transistor that's mounted to the, the chassis is it for a heat sink. That's your voltage source. Do that. You now have a radio with an unlocked clarifier in both coarse and fine. I've already done it. I've done the alignment on this now. And when you key the microphone, there's absolutely no change in frequency whatsoever. So it works, and it works perfectly. So if you have a President McKinley, that is the procedure for unlocking your clarifier. You'll need to, I'll just cover it really quick again, behind the speaker. You're going to remove this through-hole component resistor, this through-hole uh, through leaded resistor right here. Also, behind this resistor is a tiny 0402 sized resistor. You're going to remove that one. And then in front of this through-hole leaded resistor, you're going to remove the diode that is nearest to this notch in the board. That's all the components you have to remove. Then you flip your radio over, attach to that pin right there, like I say, counting from the, the right, one, two, three, four, and that comes over, and you're going to attach that wire over here. That's your voltage source. Um, now, you will need to do an alignment on the radio, so you're going to need a, fr I mean, you can probably do it by ear. If you, if you know somebody that has a radio that's dead on frequency, they're guaranteed dead on frequency, you could probably do your adjustments, but... Honestly, you should really have a frequency counter to, to properly do an alignment on it, but uh, I'll leave that up to you. I just wanted to show the procedure for actually unlocking the clarifier, so there it is. I hope that helped somebody. Yeah, it would have been nice if that was all that was required. They, they had good intentions. I swear that's why they did this. They did this to make it easy so anybody can unlock the clarifier, and you can. The problem is, it, like I say, it's just, it's impossible to get, they're close, don't get me wrong, the transmit and receive frequencies will be close, and that's, and the amount of difference is going to vary from radio to radio. Component tolerances, what the voltage difference is between that receive and transmit circuit, or the, the switching circuits, if you had almost no voltage difference, honestly, that may be all you would have to do, is re remove those two through-hole resistors, but... If there's, if there's more than just a tiniest bit of voltage difference between those receive and transmit switching voltages, your frequencies are going to be off. So, uh, there you go. I hope that helps. Um, like I say, if you do this yourself, just be very, very careful. Removing that little guy there, and that the, this one's not, actually, this is the smaller component, uh, not that one, this one right here. This right here isn't too bad, because there's actually a lot of room around it. 
but you need to be really, really careful right here. There's another diode right here. You cannot damage this diode. That diode has to stay in circuit because that's actually the voltage is going to be going through that diode. So if you damage that diode, you just bricked your radio until you... <laughs> or if you damage the circuit traces, you could really be up, you know what, without... <laughs> you creek without a paddle. Um, so yeah, if you, if you don't feel confident working on... Uh, not only surface mount, but very small surface mount components. Yeah, you might want to send this out to have this done by somebody. So, at least for techs that work on surface mount radios, there is the procedure. Um, it's been, been de-hacked, and it's out there for the world to see now.